everybody, it's Krista with Crafting Kitty and I am going to show you how to make a, a chipboard mini album. Now I'm going to be using this one from Michaels which is called the Spellbound Forest. I'm sure you've all seen it before. Just give you a little bit of a flip through, not a little big one. I already pulled out the papers and stuff that I want in here. Basically, this is the papers. There's a few more in here that are really nice. I like those. I like this one. I pulled that sheet out. Um, the other ones, mm, not what I'm going to use right now. I do like this one as well. It might come out eventually. I'm not quite sure. This one has borders in it, and I might pull off a couple of the borders out of here. Uh, I like this page as well, and I just bought a stamp from AliExpress. Um, I think it's, it was in my AliExpress first haul, and it is a um, moth with a death head on it. So I thought, I'll give it a shot. Uh, i got to figure out where I stuck that, though, because I know I put it aside. As I do everything. And the other one I'm going to be using is the Enchanted Forest, uh, which is by Recollections as well. Um, these are the two new Halloween pads that I was at my store and decided I'm going to give it a shot and figure, float, fool around with this one. Again, you've probably already all seen these already. Um, I've got some nice glitter in here as well. I did pull this sheet out, but I've decided not to use it because I'm going a different way. Um, just stripes. This It doesn't really have a lot like on the pages and stuff. I just bought it because i like been really into mushrooms. I like the thought of these and I do have mushroom stamps that I want to play with. This one is just playing with the moon and the stars. This one I did pull out to use in the book. Uh, the purple and the green and stuff is all standing out to me. Um, I did pull this out, all the pages with the cut aparts. I have them that came in two. And this page I haven't touched yet because I love it. It is an acetate paper with all the beetles and the moths on it. And then the next page is just a purple glitter paper. Very nice. And there doesn't seem to be, there's no fallout from this paper, which is awesome because you don't have to um, worry about getting glitter everywhere when you cut it. So those are the two paper pads I'm going to be using. Now when I create my books, uh, I will sometimes use uh, pre-made uh, books, um, but not always. Sometimes I just, I have tons of 12 by 12 chipboard and I mark it out and then I cut it by hand. So. Um, this is, I just go in and you have to follow the lines very carefully. Again, it's not going to be perfect, which is fine. I get it as close to as I possibly can. And anything else kind of gets uh, covered up with paper. So, you just have to be very mindful of where your lines are and when you cut through it. I never get through on the first try, obviously. So, I always come back and go once more. A lot of times it has gone through, it just hasn't gone through everywhere. So this book I'm making, I've already cut out some sheets or parts of this already because if I didn't, it would be a heck of a long video. And I just want to show you how I make my books because I have been asked before, you know, where do I find these things and well usually I just cut them out by hand um, it's also the same thing when I am doing a letter album um, not a letter album sorry I meant a word album so I did do one which I sent to my friend Thelma I believe uh, a word album I'm pretty sure I sent her the spooky album all those letters I have traced, measured, and then cut them out by hand. So, it it's not as hard as it seems because 
you just have to measure as to where you, because you with the word with the let, word albums you want it to be you know legible so that you can see how the word spells out and everything and so you just kind of as soon as you get the first letter as to how big you want it which could be about this big you know if it was letter s kind of thing then i would just you know i would have the s out here and give it a certain amount but then you have to be mindful of how wide your chipboard is too because like i said 12 by 12 paper unless you manage to get something wider um you know you won't always get to cover everything so see there's little areas here that are you know have a little bit of a leftover so i used to just come in and snip it off and like i said these aren't going to be perfect but they're good enough and on my albums i don't use bindings or anything like this i use the three rings and usually how i do this is i take one of my older albums that i have and i place the and as you can see on the top right here it's not all the same but again this is handmade and it's not going to be plain cut properly the way you think it's going to be um i do have a ruler and i usually only punch out the first one if i can find my ruler i did have it <laughs> There it is. So this album, and I don't measure, um, you know, a standard size or whatever. I measure to match what it is I want to do. So in the paper pad, the um, the spellbound, is it? Sorry, the enchanted forest, the spellbound forest. Sorry, on the cut parts, it had. I'm just gonna find it for you maybe I won't <laughs> sorry just taking a second here there it is on this cut apart right here I took this out and I measured it against the chipboard and then I cut it out so that is how I got my first um, piece of chipboard was I took this piece right here measured it up to this on every one of them and like I said it's not perfect but that's the way it is and usually I ink the edges anyways so you can't tell the, that this is showing a lot of times it just blends in so I have this one this probably wasn't the first one I cut this is probably like a second or a third one I cut I gotta find the right one. Pretty sure it was this one. Yeah. It matches it. So, usually what I do is I take... I'll take that out of there. I take my ruler. And I figure out where I want to punch my holes. Now this is relatively 8... 8 inches by six inches so with this one I don't usually like I said measure all my books in order to figure out where I want to put the hole I do know that I have to leave a little bit of an edge here when I do it so that I can fit the rings in and that they can flip back and forth nicely so um, I'm probably gonna put a ring right about here at the top it leaves enough space so it doesn't you know it's not going to rip there when I do it and then when I come down I go to about here figure out where that spot is and then the next one is going to be about here are they all evenly spaced probably not I just look at it again and sort of eyeball it and then if I don't like where the position is I just come down here and move the next one down here get rid of that one and then I figure out that looks relatively even to me <laughs> like I said I eyeball everything I don't measure half the time uh, but you can if you want to 
and I do have my crocodile here and I always use this side and then I come in here right above where the little spots is that I want to put my my hole come over to this one do the same and do the same so now I have my template for where I want the holes so I just always go grab this one like this use this as a marker make my little holes there I should have did this way. no that's right and I grab all my books, tap them down, make sure they're all even, or as even as they can be, make my marks. I have to tell you, the crocodile was one of the best things that I ever bought. Made, made punching holes through these things so much easier than, you know, trying to do it other ways with my smaller punches so if you don't have one well, I say get one they are awesome so we're just gonna punch these all out and I will show you the rings I use in just a moment I do have colored rings that I use sometimes it just depends on how I'm feeling about the book I'm making whether I prefer to have a colored ring or not, um, I usually just go to our dollar store and I pick up these rings and these are what I have. In order to decorate them, I you end up using um, ribbons and stuff so it hides the rings when you do this. So let's just finish this up. This is probably one of my first ever tutorials I've ever done. I'm not sure how long this is going to be, but I will keep it short and sweet as much as possible. Um, not sure if I know how to fast forward, made this go fast forward or not, but we shall see when it comes time when I try to do my editing. Almost done doing all the holes here. out of the way because they after a while if I don't get rid of them they will stick to everything and we don't need that hassle <laughs> so here is my book that started these are my rings because I'm just gonna check one thing here oopsie It's funny, I can't find most things in my room, but I can always find the rings. <laughs> so I have a whole bin of rings here. Uh, it was an old Prima, Prima flower um, holder. So I do have different colors, different sizes. There's these ones, there's the smaller ones. Um, these I actually only picked up. I picked up a whole whack of them at the... Um, dollar store one day so it's just a side you know and there there's even larger ones because I was playing with the idea of perhaps making um, a 12 by 12 album which I have never done because I always find that uh, this I might use the blue ones here because there is a lot of blue in that one it's not a typical Halloween um, album but it will do because uh, I think it'll work out fine especially I'm going to show you the papers I'm going to be using in this album excuse me I had to switch my glasses because I realized that my actual glasses 
that I use do not work when crafting that well either. So I have this page, which I'm going to be using, and I'll be fussy cutting some of these out, even punching some out so I can use them as embellishments. Um, the Mic My Michaels did not have any stickers, no stamps, no nothing that went with either one of these albums. I was told there is some, but they don't have them. I have this one. Yes, it is all kind of dark looking, but the moon, one, I never know if I'm actually going to use the pictures until I get there, or the sheets until I get there. I might change my mind, pull out a different one. Uh, again, this is one I pulled out originally. I was gonna, originally going to make a square album um, and just use this as the ba as a background and then decorate this one in a certain way. Uh, but I've changed my mind on that, so this one will be going back inside the book here. So I don't even know if that was the right book. <laughs> so. And as you can see, I showed you the, I have a little piece of chipboard. I do use those. I have all the fussy cut ones that I got from pieces that I took from both books. And uh, we'll see what I end up using because, I mean, I'm not sure which of these I'll use. I usually use these as tags for a tux and stuff, so I put those onto another sheet. I do have some of this paper and I need to find, I don't know, think I'll be using the green one because the green seems to be off. But I do have black and I do have the pearlized white which I think will help for brightening up. So I'm going to put the green away. I will have to find another solid color. This is the other sheet that I have and it is lighter which is good because it kind of brightens these up a bit. and. In my albums, I always have um, solid colors in here. So um, this video is getting pretty long already. So I'm going to find the other sheets. I'm going to pause you just for a minute. Okay, I'm back. And I've picked out some solid colors. I've gone through already, basically. I've added a couple more sheets. I added this one here. I've added this one I've taken out because I want the borders and a little bit of the picture frames and stuff on here. And I took out this one because I really enjoy the crow on the skeleton head. Now, for backing of cards and stuff, I have these different shades of purple and some blue. I'm not sure if I'll use these all these colors. Some of them, they're close but not good. But as a backer for, say... Uh, one of the index cards kind of stuff like this it'll work fine so because I don't want to use uh, eight and a half by eleven in my album because it doesn't always fit sometimes and then I had these ones I picked out this one I thought would be a good match I guess in the darker light it looked more navy and then on this side it was more purple than navy and not the right shade of purple that I need either. So this one is going to be put back and put away. Then I found these sheets, which I thought was an excellent match for the navy here. Because I like to match up my um, colors when I do the opposite page. I like to have um, various shades of... I do have a nice dark green one that I thought would go nice with this one. Or a purple kind of not the right shade of green so I did pull out I have Bow Bunny um, reversible paper they have um, on one side they look like this where they're kind of a swirl and then on the other side it's like a polka dot so sometimes I like to use those but it's more of a match like this way giving me a little bit more depth maybe drawing out the darker purples in here so I'm uh, definitely going to use that. And then I have the green, which I thought picks up the nicer shade of green. So I think I'll be using that in here as well. And I just like the swirl because it kind of reminds me of like, you know, the swirl, swirling, toiling, trouble bubble, you know, cauldrons kind of thing. And I do have it also in like a tealy color, which looks nice with this one, brings up the blue. Also works very well with uh, this page so I have that page and that page and 
Um, I think even it might work well with this one just as a nice contrast. Hopefully, I, can, I think I have another one of these. I'm really hoping I do. Um, I'm kind of looking at this one now and make, thinking maybe I might use this uh, as a in a background with uh, for a journaling card. Just put a nice colored cardstock on top of it, um, and we'll try that with this one. I do have a really nice sand colored one that would match nicely to make that one in there and it would match nicely with any one of these i do have a darker slightly darker one but i think this would look nice as well with that um so these are all the paper products that i'm going to be using and i think i'm going to stop the video here as part one and then part two i will show you how i start to cut and put the paper put it together how I mix, mix and match the different pages, uh, making sure that everything looks great. Um, and, you know, I also have, I'll show you a few embellishments I have. Like, I like this one. It's kind of not the right color, but on the inside cover, you probably won't notice it as much. So, we shall see. How that all goes really happy i have this bow bunny paper now i've had it for a while i am what you would call a paper hoarder because i love my paper so let's just recap all the paper here so we're going to be using all the we have this this which would be nice for the backgrounds as well if i decide not to go with the sand colored ones we're going to be using this paper. We're going to, I'm just going to show you all the, the ones are the bugs where I plan to cut everything out. The moth paper as well. This one, this one here I really like has the moth, the spiders, plants, everything inside of it. This one with the bird and the skull. And we're going to be using the borders off of this one. Probably a few other embellishments that I think will match nicely with this uh, theme as well that I can find. But we shall see how that all works out. Um, thank you all for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell so you know when I upload new content to my channel. Um, if you like this kind of video where I show you a tutorial, please leave a comment down below. Um, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching, and let's all get crafty. Bye-bye.